Butterfly control panel. Non touch screen. Summary. Okay, uh, this is the control panel for this machine. Uh, let me explain all the buttons. This button is a memory button or the load file button. It lets you change your load designs from the USB stick, which is on the side here. It also lets you change between the designs already loaded into memory. This button is parameters and options for the machine. This button here is a float mode, and you can see it goes from green, which is sewing, and yellow, which is floating, which is moves about the pattern, moves the XY pantograph without sewing, so you can kind of see where it's what it's going to do. And this lets you traverse through the pattern really fast. Without, and then when you, you have to use the green and red buttons with, with these. And this will not move the pantograph until you get to the point. It will just show uh, where it's going, and then you press stop, and it'll stop there, and then it'll move the thing. Um, most people will want it here and does actual sewing. This one here is uh, automatic color change or manual color change, and it will change this indicator here. Green uh, here is fully automatic color change. This is semi-automatic color change, or you have to hit start after each one, after each color is done. And this is fully manual. It will not change needles automatically. I don't think it will do thread cuts. It will use it if you want, but most people will want fully automatic and not the other two. Uh, this one here lets you program the colors, and either one of these do a decent job of doing it. You probably will want modify, just so there's no behaviors, and then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven through eight, and then it goes down and down hundreds. Most of your patterns only have a couple of colors, so you'll just fill it out to whatever you need. Like so, press enter, uh, press escape to get out of there, and then that will change your colors. And that was this one, color change. Uh, here's rotation, and this will rotate, and usually you, you, will, you will want to rotate to do caps and such. Uh, caps definitely want it this way and not that way, if you put the cap frame on. Now, nothing's happening because we are in drive mode. Drive mode's over here. Most embroidery machines do not let you change parameters unless you're out of drive mode, and the machine does nothing when you press the start button unless you are in drive mode. So when we're in drive mode, the machine's ready to sew, and you just press the start button, but you can't change parameters. When you're out of drive mode, this button, enter, then we can change parameters. So this button is rotation, and there's eight options. Uh, this P is normal, this P is good for caps, and the rest are it's just if you need. And there we go, and that is rotation. This is manual trim. Uh, if you need to do fire the, not the, if you need to cut the thread, and then we press enter, and it spins the main shaft, it cuts the thread, it does the grabber tip, it's just manual trim. Uh, the bottom one is not too popular, that just cuts it without moving the main shaft. And let's get out of that. You can also leave menus by pressing the same exact menu, I think, yeah. Oh, that's not the menu. Um, Anyhow, trace is in here in the home menu. So if we go down to five arrow keys and we press enter, confirm move along border of design, we'll trace it out. And then uh, the pantograph is moving in a square around where it's gonna sew. And usually you will move, or move around and trace and just try to line everything up perfect before you start sewing. Um, Okay, and those are these buttons. This goes to the stop point. Not too many customers will use that. Uh, over here, this is escape. This just brings you out of whatever menu you're in. We're in that menu, we're in that menu. It just brings you back to the main screen. This is drive mode or confirm mode. Again, this is the indicator for it. We go into drive mode. The machine can sew when you press the green button. And, but you can't change any parameters. You cannot load 
you can't change your current design. And when you leave or release at a drive mode, uh, that will show you in red. And now all your options are now available to be changed. Uh, okay, over here is the inner key. And again, there will just be... Anytime you see an X or the check mark, it probably wants you to use the enter key or escape for yes or no. So you'll be using this button a lot. Um, okay, moving up, this dot here returns the main shaft to origin, main motor back to 100 degrees. You'll be using that a lot if, if you move the machine around or if it's knocked off of 100 degrees for some reason or if a technician is working on it. Uh, technicians will really be using that a lot. Um, moving on, over here is, these are speed up and speed down. They will set the maximum speed uh, that, that it'll sew at. Uh, the machine won't, will not sew at, well, the machine will try to sew at that speed. So if it has to move very large stitches, it can't hit that speed. But if there's a lot of tiny stitches, it will hit that easily. And then you just make, make the machine go faster and slower. Uh, do that to your taste or to the stability of your machine. Um, arrow keys. When you press this, the panograph is moving around. Uh, and here you see two arrows. Here, if I press this button, it goes from one to two. When it's on one arrow, the panograph moves extremely slowly, so you can do fine aim of where you're going to sew your pattern. And when you do it fast, well, the panograph moves fast. Uh, now, when you're in an, when you're in a menu, these no longer move the panograph, but it moves along the menu. So you just move along the menu, hit enter to what you want, or hit escape to cancel. When you're in this screen, then this starts moving the panograph again. And generally, you would uh, line, move around until the origin of your pattern, until your pattern is going to sew in the place you want it to, and then you'll leave it alone. Uh, and that's the arrow keys here. The number pad here, when you're on this screen, will move the the head left and right to change colors. So if I press here, the head will move to needle number one and it will sew on, no, I won't sew on needle number one unless you are in a fully manual mode. When you're in an automatic mode, you can move around, but it's gonna move it back according to whatever color you're on. So if you're in manual mode, you'll use this to change the needle around. Or if you're a technician working on the screen, you'll be working on the machine, you'll be using these buttons a lot too. Uh, sometimes people really find it useful to move the needle number one when, before you do a trace function because it's pretty easy to see where the center of the pattern is when you're on needle number one. Um, but anyways, if you need to go to a larger needle because there, it only goes one through nine and there's a zero here, um, if you need to go to needle 10, there is more than 10 needles, you would press this 10 plus here, 10 plus, zero, and that moved me to needle number 10, 10 plus 11, that moved 11, 12, and so on. Then I press, just press one without it, and we go back to needle number one. And what else? Up here are custom keys. They don't really have a lot of useful uh, options to choose from, but you can. We did choose trace for all of them. So, um, if you get this panel from us, we probably changed it to trace. It says move along border of design, yes or no. Hit enter, and it's doing a trace now. Uh, We just did that for convenience and because our, op our options for custom is a little limited. Um, and that's, that's the gist of the main screen of the control panel. And of course he here, I can't, I can't go all the way, is where a USB stick uh, or your Wi-Fi stick would be placed uh, for loading designs into the control panel. And that is a summary of the buttons. Now, 
looking at the screen, can I zoom up some? There we go. Okay, um, up here shows your current needle. It said there's a needle and it says a, a one there. That just shows the current needle. I press two, the machine moved, we're on needle two. It's back to one and that, that just lets you know what needle you're on. Um, here is your color change programming for, for, the, for the next few colors. Um, in this case, it looks like we have needle number three for all of our colors. Let's change that around. Uh, modify. One, two, five, six, seven, eight. Enter. Escape. And it says one, two, five, six, seven, eight, and then whatever. So usually you only have a couple of colors in your design. This will show you what they are and let you know if you're going to get the colors you think you will. Uh, and again, if you need high numbers, you would just use the plus 10 there. And that is... And that, just, again, just shows you what colors you're going to sew on. Um, here is your maximum RPM. Again, this, these two buttons here, uh, yeah, you can see them. Uh, we'll change your RPM some. You can probably do that during the design. You'll want to choose an RPM that feels good, looks good, and sews good. If you go faster, sometimes there's a little bit of quality loss or it, the machine gets louder. Uh, choose an RPM that works for you. Um, and this is a desired RPM. The machine doesn't actually go at that RPM unless he is physically able to move the hoop fast enough to it. So if you have really big, long stitches, he will not hit fast RPMs. And if you have tiny stitches, he will really spike up in speed. Uh, but yeah, just choose a good RPM for the stability of your machine. Make sure your machine is stable and heavy and the feet are down on, on the concrete or wherever. And then you can go higher without any vibration or noise. And if your machine is wobbly, you probably shouldn't because you, you didn't stabilize its feet. You should probably shouldn't go fast. Uh, and again, this sets the speed of the machine. Okay, here's just some stats on it. Uh, design name, the sc current scale, 100% for X and Y. Uh, rough size uh, on X and Y from your origin point, And it's just not too important. Uh, most people don't need that. Um, I think I explained to most of these. This, I believe, tells you you're at 100 degrees. Exactly. Uh, I think the scissor shows up there if he's a little bit off of his home. Uh, I believe this shows you what pattern you're on in memory. Me in memory, patterns are listed one through whatever. Uh, not sure about that. This is repeat mode or no repeat mode. And you only care if you're you in a repeat mode. Um, what else? I guess that's it for the main thing. You can see a kind of estimate for time here and you will see your percentage of your pattern and that will go up and let's see if I can't put it into float mode here. There we go. Press, let's press start. And yeah, you can see 1%, 2%, it's climbing up slow. Let me stop that. Let me go there because it's faster. There we go, back to zero and back to sewing. Um, okay, and of course your pattern's here. You'll see it in black and white. It will fill out in color as it's done. It's just a, a visual way to show you where you are.